The best way to refine your business is to listen to those that are doing things in an effective way. The people that are actually out there making those relationships grow deeper, seeing more transactions from referrals in their sphere of influence. What we're going to do today is, is I'm going to get a great opportunity for you to kind of be a fly on the wall, so to speak, in another session that I had with the National Rethink Council. What the Rethink Council is, is it's a gathering of nine of the most professional, uh, top producing, and some of the up and coming agents throughout the Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Network around the nation. We come together, really talk about some of these things. In this session specifically, we're going to talk about how you can generate more referrals with your client base. We're going to talk about some of the things that are happening social media wise. We're really going to take a deep dive on the things that this group of agents are doing to move their business forward. I know it's going to be helpful for you. Make sure you take some notes and let's get to it. I don't want you dominating the entire conversation, or right. We're gonna we're gonna want everybody to participate. And we're gonna expect everybody to participate in any of these conversations we have. So, I mean, let's let's open it up if we could, just with you know, of all the social medias, right? Because it's it's from TikTok. We're hearing people use TikTok. Who would think TikTok is a business vehicle? But it is to LinkedIn, which is very more business orientated. You know, if if you can say what is your uh, jump in and say what is your preference of your favorite uh, social media platform that you use in regards to you believing helping you grow your business and pick up additional clients. So if you can nail one down, this is your one that you believe has gave you the greatest increase in business and growth, uh, what would that be? And so open that question up. Get start, Heidi. Heidi, you're the right. social media guru. Thank you. Um, so off of Instagram last year, I made $100,000 with 3,000 followers. This year, my goal is 6,000 followers. Jimmy's helping me get there. Um, so we hope I hope to personally make 200,000 alone off of Instagram. So that's my number one. Number two is LinkedIn. Um, number three would be Facebook. And I just haven't dived into TikTok so, the way so, I want to. So on Instagram, why do you believe that's the why do you believe that generates the most activity for you? Why do you believe that's the place that's growing your business? The most? stories. And why are you doing differently there? Then uh, go ahead. Yeah. So the stories keep them engaged because stories are only up for twenty four hours. That keeps them engaged with my everyday life. Um, and then I also have them contribute. So like if there's a poll, they get to like pick things. So they they feel like they're along for the journey, which is a lot of fun. Um, also, they know me. They know my personality so that when I walk through the door, if they do call me to sell their house, they already know me, they like me, they trust me, I have the deal. So that's been really wonderful there. Um, but also... It's referrals also, though, right? I was just going to get... Referrals from other realtors has been incredible. Yeah. So okay. right now, um, I, I'd have to ask my TC, but I bet we've got 45 referrals off of Instagram alone this year that we're so just waiting increased to... Increased exposure, but I love... The thing that I heard you say that I think you kind of skipped over that I think is important is you have polls, you have engagement, right? You get them engaged in that conversation. Yep. And I and right and we were talking about building relationships. The more engagement you have, the stronger relationship is over time. And sometimes I will do something just for realtors, and sometimes I'll do something just for Joe Public. So I try to bounce around a lot. I used to only be Joe Public, and I wasn't attracting realtors. And then I noticed that by attracting realtors, my pocketbook got much more affected. Mm -hmm. So that's been something I kind of changed about, probably during COVID. Have you done anything particular to add those agents in other places? Have you done any type of, you know, promotion or followed other people or anything in target markets? Yeah. So when I when I'm on Instagram, if there's anybody that has a good social media presence, I always try to tag them while I'm doing things because I want them to reshare me so that other realtors see other realtors and then they see me and they want to follow me there. Um, so that's been really big. But also like being at convention, being at explosion, being at your conference, like your, the your face to face has been huge. Y'all, Explosion, I've gotten seven referrals alone off of Explosion from last year. Um, but it's all about face-to-face. -face and and the price of Explosion. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Look, business has always been about face-to-face, -face, right? Like, this is nothing new. It's just now we can do it for free and fast. Yeah. So um, I could talk about this for hours, but I make sure I do that. Because Heidi has never changed. Heidi is the same exact person that I met four years ago. The difference is, instead of Heidi captivating me, in a one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. what social media does now is it gives you the ability, if you're willing to be transparent and use the stories, for Heidi to then have it to the world and captivate the world. So the advantage on all of this, and I want to just speak to the stories real quick and I'll be quiet, I promise, because I've been really studying this, and we were talking about this last night. 
your engagement, the algorithm for your stories starts on a daily basis with Instagram. So the first post you make on Instagram with your with your story in the morning sets the tone for Instagram on how much it shares your stuff to not just your people, but by the hashtag to other people. Starting with a poll, starting with something that's gonna get engagement, helping each other by when you see those polls, those things in the morning, by commenting on those things, liking those things, sharing those things, it's gonna help each other too. So just be <coughs> cognizant of that. You wanna to speak to any of that stuff too that you do to. Well, also using captions. So if you ever see my stories, I like to do captions a lot so that if most people aren't using their volume because most of them are at work while they're watching this. Um, so making sure you have captions on there will keep people watching your stories. If I don't do it, I'll notice that like, I'll get a big shot of people watching the first thing and then it kind of trickles out because they can't hear me so they just go on to the next story. But using captions keeps them involved and then also keeps them um, commenting and whatever. But I'm social media is called social, you need to be social. So you can't just do it one-sided and hope they come back to you. Um, so like Sierra and I have a constant I mean, almost daily talk on Instagram about like, hey, have you seen this? Have you seen that? Whatever. So do that. That will grow this loyalty because when people think about real estate, I've said this at Jimmy's conference, when people think about real estate, most people know 12 realtors. I want them to think Heidi. I want the other 11 to just be like fine realtors, but I'm the expert. So every day I'm trying to win their attention and their trust. Um, you want to speak to the con mix of content too? Something you're doing as far as, because you're doing the stories, but you're also doing reels, you're also doing those. What does that mix look like for you? I don't know. Mm, I wing it. Fair answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wing it. Uh, it really depends on how I'm feeling and what I've got going on that day. Do you have a pattern? Yeah, I have a printout I can share it. But. Okay. Yeah, mine is totally like, I'm a creative person. If I'm feeling creative, I'll hop on a reel. If I'm too busy, I don't. But are unless you systematic enough to say, I've got to do this so frequent? Yeah, so my stories. You, have, you may have a schedule more than a, 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 like I'm going to do a reel versus a post. Content versus, calendar type of thing. I don't do a content calendar, but the, um, yeah. she does. She's much more organized than I am. Um, when you look at stories, there's a, I guess it's an orange circle around it when there's a new one that's up. My circle never closes. So a lot of you know my dad is like on death's door right now and I was up visiting him on Sunday and uh, my, my circle was closed. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I went on what, uh, keeping current matters and I shared something just to have it out there because that is my rule. Like I always have to have something out there so that the engagement continues. Because to Jimmy's thing, like every morning, the algorithm matters. So I've got to make sure I'm feeding the engine. Do you have your Instagram synced up to like your Facebook and your? Yeah, I wish I didn't. I, I, I'm wondering how that's working. When it automatically goes over, the algorithms don't like that because yeah. you're not using that individual social media platform. Mm -hmm. She's saying like, if I post on Instagram, does it automatically go on Facebook? That's a lazy person's way to do it. That's, that's what I do. do. Uh, that's what I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, we all do. <laughs> no, that's what I do. I think it does. That's what I do. And, but like, no, do it. Take, do it. Into, take it off and then do it differently, and you'll see. You just copy and paste. It mess up the stories. They always get out of order on Facebook. Yeah, messes right? up the stories. I know. And then sometimes, like I, I practiced two of the same posts, like one that I did that shared equally on, or at the same time from mm -hmm. Instagram, and then I did the same post again on Facebook alone, and I got more likes on just the same picture, same everything, when I did it as a Facebook only, rather than an Instagram Facebook. Like, I've been testing this stuff out recently. It matters. So, so Molly, go. So what's, what's the one that you feel like helps you grow your business the most? It's helping you connect or, or get referrals? Um, it's actually, I would say both Instagram and Facebook, and this is why. Um, Instagram, I'm getting um, like millennial buyers buying second homes, buy, uh, move up buyers a lot on Instagram. Facebook, I'm getting a ton of first time home buyers, which I know seems backwards, but it's because their parents follow me. So their parents follow me and they'll say, you you need to, um, I know you got, you're thinking about buying a house, this is exactly the girl you need to work with. And it's because the parents are following me on social media and they trust me, so the kids trust their parents. And so that my like 25 year old buyer, I probably got from Facebook because their mom referred me. So how are, so are you, marking yourself on Facebook differently than you are on Instagram because every platform needs a different mindset of, how, of who your target is. Yeah. And in this case, I'm hearing you say Facebook is I'm targeting parents to get kids. Yeah. Um, it is a little different, but it's pretty similar Instagram and Facebook for me. I know Heidi has some theories on it. I've followed that for sure, but I, um, 
I just make sure when I'm on Facebook, I'm engaging, like I would talk with my mom or grandmother, like this is what they want to hear all the details and all the fluff. And so I make sure it's there. Instagram is more like, I got to get a hook in there. Like right, the beginning the first sentence. Yeah, it has to be such a hook. And I've noticed a massive difference with that. Um, I've also been testing a lot of reels. They don't tr transpose over to Facebook well at all. So that I feel like I'm losing something there because I think it would be very entertaining to the people I have on Facebook if they could see what's going on on Instagram, but they haven't moved over. So that I'm trying to figure out. I've done some like screen recording and then I've moved it to Facebook to see if I could get them that way. But sometimes they take the sound out. Like I don't, that whole thing I'm still trying to figure out. But um, yeah, I my thing with social that I try really hard, I'm a geo farmer. Like actually my business, I think would, I should say that I'm the strongest at geo farming because I run four farms regularly with mail, activities, all of this. And the reason why social media matters in that picture is because it's where everybody sees it all come together. Because if not, I don't look like a, I just look like business just kind of appears in my lap but it doesn't. If you look at my social media, you can see all the activities and the, the things that happen. And I brought a bunch of my mailers to show. Um, that's where people can go see the authenticity of what I'm actually doing, rather than just seeing it in their mailbox. So social media is why it's going out there everywhere, everyone. Are you in some cases targeting then just certain locations or certain? Yeah, so all of my ads are targeted to my geo farms, okay. like my social media ads. I, I literally have like drilled them down to those areas now. I used to just blanket everything like spray and pray, but as the market has shifted and I know it's more competitive because Houston has, I, our MLS I think recently reported like 48,000 realtors in the general Houston area. That's insane. Yeah. So. Um, I, I don't want to spray and pray because everybody's doing that. So I really just drilled down to my four markets or my little geo farms. And I did the math on those. Like I knew they needed a solid leading agent. I knew what their turnover rate was. I knew the age of the buyer and seller there, how much equity they had in their home. And that's why I focused on those four areas. Can I add one little tip to that that we're seeing some um, opportunity right now too is as you're sharing the story if you've got a feeder market and you've got a buyer that you sold to as you share the story of that person take and drop the pin tag them you know with them where you're tagging their friends where they might see it drop the pin instead of in your location or the area that you're noting oh. to their location hmm. and then it circles 15 miles around and it specifically targets their followers their connections in their market where they're moving from and as we know birds of feather flock together so that gives you that ability really to reach out into a new market as well. Hmm. Andrew you do um, quick uh, question for Molly how often do you mail to your geo farm? Um, twice a month if I like when I just started the new one I, I sent something out every week for a month for two months and then um, and then I it's twice a month other than that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how big are those geo farms? Um, they vary in size so one has like 1300 houses one has 600 one's like nine and then the third one has like 250 it's a smaller but high, much much higher price and that's my newest one i also started with um a uh like a special newsletter for that neighborhood because the average price point in the neighborhood is like 1.2 million ish and i want to be in there bad mm -hmm. thank you the most important before we go to andrew the most important thing that i'm hearing here out of this whole thing is right there's no one platform social media marketing open houses i mean client appreciation there's no one platform that's going to help you continue to grow your business. They all have to complement each other, right? Yeah. It has to be cohesive. That's the one thing I figured out. It, like, I, I have listened to these things and being here has changed my business 100%, but the one thing I have learned is just to be consistent. Whatever it is yeah, you're doing, right. just stick with it for a while. Like, don't try it for three times, it didn't work, and throw your hands up. Keep at it. Andy, what are you doing? Which, which platforms are you using? Well, the, the, thing, the overarching thing here, <clears throat> studying these platforms is a strategic exercise and it changes so frequently, you have to pay attention to it. So that's first and foremost. TikTok's <coughs> changing every week, Instagram changes every week. The owner of Instagram will come on and say, here's what we're doing mm -hmm. now on Instagram. You better pay attention to these things. That's a good follow if you're not following them. Absolutely. You gotta, so that overarching, this is, you have to be a student of this stuff. This isn't for fun. This is, we're talking about business. Now we're talking about social media there's like those four platforms, LinkedIn, TikTok, and of course Facebook and Instagram. Then you also have search. So we're not talking about search, but it's kind of together. Search being Google and YouTube, where you can show up for search terms. Also equally as important, underutilized in my opinion, in a lot of ways, grossly in our industry. Mm -hmm. And then you have social. Everyone's so heavy on social and that's great. 
Um, but I want to talk about YouTube. Please. We might yeah. do a video about that later because I think YouTube for agents seems to be a blue ocean where there's not a lot of sharks swimming around in that water. There's not a lot of blood in the water. So I'm literally doing things now where we'll just do a generic, and, and I'm a big fan of everything everywhere. So hey, create compelling content. That means if you're creating compelling, and compelling means it doesn't suck, and people want to watch it, which is hard to do. If you can do compelling content, why wouldn't you put that everywhere? Hey, this is good stuff. This is a cool house. I want that everywhere. So compelling content's one thing we can talk about, and then distribution is the other thing we can talk about. Those are two different things. Creating compelling content, distribution. But on the distribution side, once you have the compelling content, you want as many people to see it as possible for the least amount of dollars for branding. So you have to ask yourself, what is my goal when I'm distributing this content? Is it just to get people to see me? Is it for my personal brand? Do I want to own the mind share of the people? When you think about real estate, I know you have 12 people, but they're not me. That's good. Or is it, do I want leads? Do I want name, numbers, and emails so I can have someone harass these people until they buy? Which is also good. So if you can identify that, then you can decide how you want to distribute these things. So anyway, back to YouTube, what we found is unbelievable like arbitrage here where I spent $200 is the number. $200, not a lot of money. And we have on a, on a video tour and the house was a dump, kind of. So it doesn't have to be this crazy sexy house. It does a 200K row home, fine. And you do a tour of that house and if you promote that on YouTube and no one does it because no one has went into Google Ads Manager because it's not as easy to do on your phone inside an app. But if you are willing to do that, 200 bucks, I got 33,000 views. This was like two weeks ago. 30, you know how, many, how much money you'd have to spend on Facebook boosting a post to get 33,000 views? Oh, by the way, targeted much better than Facebook because they only let you do 15 mile radius. To the city I'm in, YouTube lets you target by city. So I'm in, I'm from Bel Air, Maryland. I got 33,000 people to watch this four minute video. 80% of them watched the whole thing. Mm, wow. wow. 94,000 minutes. What kind of naked women did you have to answer? That's right. <laughs> and so I thought the same thing. Because 80%. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It wasn't even a good video. I cheaped out because a lot of times you do a video tour, I like to be there and you kind of show the house. And anytime I do a video tour of a house, I like to say, I tell the sellers, I want to tell the story of this house that if you only looked at the pictures, you might miss this. I want to control the narrative and you bring the seller in and they love you and they tell their friends about it and they share it and you bring your seller in to help you distribute the, the compelling content. So Angel, when did you do that? The, the video ago? ago? No, I mean, did you do it like as your listing is going live or when did you? We're very serious and it's the more tactical listing stuff. We want to control that listing process tight and there is no winging it and this is exactly how we're doing it on a timeline. I brought all kinds of cool stuff that we can riff on, but like how I present it is I say, this is how we stack a deck in your favor. And we don't play games with this. We don't put this house on the market. We're doing it just like this. What day can we be ready for photo and video? And from there, everything trickles out. So we want to stack the deck in the seller's favor. But, so, but the day you do that is the day it goes active? It's, no, you it's a week, that. and so we can, you want to do I that think like that's your question, yeah, right? Seven yeah. days before you go coming soon. Or after. So your MLS allows that? Yeah, but even if it's, say, forget coming soon, seven days before you go active, I want that video running out of well, some legal shit. Well, coming soon will allow you to yeah. legally pr promote that. I think every market's a little different. Yeah, we don't have coming soon in my market anymore. Every market's going to be a little different, but just just accordingly, the, the sooner you can get it out, the better. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Ultimately, for, for this, he, it's very strategic. It may be different for you. But there needs to be a very active plan. When Andrew yeah. sits down with people, as we've gone through some of his listing presentation, there is no room for error. It is This is the plan. This is the results we get. This is why we're different. So whatever it is for you, you know, some little things that you can do strategically like there, you know, is, you know, what is the most active day on your personal website? If you know that, now your analytics are there, and you tell somebody that, they're like, oh, this is different level. Mm -hmm. So it's just being specific, like mm -hmm. Andrew does, and strategic in that. It wouldn't matter if he did it seven days after it went pending or seven days before. Whoa. He's looking for 33,000, how many minutes? Of him talking to people for $200. Wow. Yeah, but also, if he does it early, then if somebody's Googling it because YouTube is owned by Google, yes. then boom, it goes oh, to his information. Here's the why it's so great. 
That, that's true too. Anyone who searches that address, if you type any address on the MLS, Zillow will come up first or Redfin right. will come up first. Not when you're on YouTube. If I do the YouTube ad yep. and it's me presenting a compelling video, I come up first. Yep. Interesting. I come up, which is, that's crazy enough. But the other thing is how do they display those ads? And we went into this, Jimmy's gonna probably put a, a video out on it, which is you wanna be in the YouTube pre-roll ads and there's a little interesting thing here. like. Every time someone in that city who meets our demographic is watching whatever on YouTube, which is primarily parents putting on YouTube sing-along stuff for their kids, honestly, <laughs> we pop up on the screen and I can't tell you, I'm telling you hundreds of times, I just started doing this two months ago, actually no, around Super Bowl, hundreds of times people say, oh my God, you came up on my TV, we watched the whole thing, it was so funny, you keep coming up on our TV, <laughs> other agents are calling me, how much does that cost? We were watching the Super Bowl, my kids were in the other room, and you're on the TV walking through this huge house. And they loved it. We wanted to watch it back. We couldn't watch it back. I'm like, I'm going to double, triple, quadruple down on this. Now, we'll probably ruin this in the next year and a half. And it'll be something else. But for now, if to pick one, it's, I, like, I like that YouTube. This yeah, is the beauty of this. Do you film your own, or does speed. somebody film it for you? No, I, yeah, no, we have a video, video guy. But you could film it yourself. Mm -hmm. I think some of the most compelling content is taking this. And you're saying, look at, like, these phones are so good. No one has an excuse not to do it. So this whole thing is, look, the reason you don't create more content is because it's not in your schedule and you talk yourself out of it and that's just the deal. So, so if you're not willing to get over that, then you can just sit sit out for a little bit. And that's where a lot of people are, particularly in the networks. If we're talking to like the 50,000 agents and say, if you don't, this is what I tell our team, if you're not willing to do this, you're never allowed to complain again about anything. So pick your deal. Just don't complain then. I don't have an opinion on the inspections or hiring. But well, you're not even doing you're not doing anything to get business. Can you make a compelling argument for anything on a postcard? Pretty damn hard. But for free, you can, but you, you still don't do it. And you don't do enough of it, me myself included. Not enough. Some of the smartest people around the country, we're at Boom Town, some of these top teams from any brand, they're coming up to me and saying, Hey, I, I like that you only take listings and you do content, but I just do the content. Smart people, people have just been there and done that. I'm thinking, this is something. So guys, we're like, you know, Gary B says, you're really running a media company. Yeah. To your point, it's when you say, you know, the comment about postcards, it's like the world we used to live in was the um, opportunity was defined for us. You could only produce X. And so everybody had to produce X. So naturally with the web, the power's been opened up, YouTube, we're all our own movie studios. We're all our own production studios, or can be. And so that's real power. You can choose not to use the power, but don't be surprised when your competition does and beat you. Well, and I'll say the last thing on this we can jump is um, you still do everything, because everything does work. So we do the postcards, and Berkshire Hathaway's got a relationship well, she, with yeah, Express yeah, Box, yeah. right? But on those postcards, i got a QR code, and I have a big arrow that says, check out this video. And it's the YouTube video. Right, and that's my point is, just like you, they all have to tie these. You yeah. have yeah. to be systematic in what they're doing. Multiple links. And now stories give you the ability with the links. You don't even have to have the 10,000 people to have it where you do a clip out of that and you have the little blinking arrow to the YouTube video so you can you can circle there. Sierra, and this is a good point. I think everybody does things differently. Being authentically you is going to look different than it does for Andrew. Um, Sierra, y'all have a lot of success with social media. You want to talk to how y'all do it? Um, we. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should tell you this is um, my goals for this year is to go to the lake three times a month, and my sister was like giving me trouble. She's like, "What kind of goals at?" I'm like, "Well, I want to work life balance. I'm going to the lake three times a month." But anyways, do it. Um, we do. We don't do so much value on social media. We do more so branding and keeping ourselves top of mind. I want someone to scroll, say Sierra Reed, real estate, and keep scrolling. I don't care if they watch the whole video. That's what we do. So we try to be fun. We try to just be ourselves. Like we might be wearing a sweatshirt, you know, like I'm not here to put on a suit and act like I'm somebody I'm not. So um, we get a lot of engagement by being authentic. We do a lot of giveaways, a lot of, um, like yesterday we did Treat Yourself Tuesday. At Starbucks. What, what platform are you using? Is there a, pri is there a primary platform that you're using? Um, we use uh, Instagram and Facebook the most. I get the most from Facebook. Okay. Um, I think it's probably my age. My sister coming on my team, she's a little bit younger, so she's tapping in Instagram a lot more right. now. Um, we pretty much 
put the same thing on both platforms, but we get more comments and stuff on Facebook. And um, why is that? Does anybody know? I don't know. Facebook's still I, the I, biggest. I, I universally see that there's more statements on Facebook now. I, I think watched. demographically it matters. Right. Yes. Like where you are in the world. Yeah. Does it? Absolutely. If your if your average home buyer age for your area is lower than average, then it's going to be Instagram that you're going to be getting yeah. most. Right. Search on. You know, Chris Smith just came out with a second edition of his book called The Conversion Code. Awesome book. It's like talks about what we're talking about on steroids, and he talks about every conversion code. He just came out, and he's got I was listening to the podcast on the way over, and he said Facebook does have by far the most users. There's right. still the ten thousand pound gorilla. There's right. billions of people on there. It's like it would be really asinine to ignore Facebook um, in any market. See, Eric, and, and I don't. I'm not much into social media. I don't do a lot of posting, but. If I post something, I do put on Instagram and Facebook, but I'll get 100 on Instagram and I'll get 400 on Facebook, mm -hmm. and the comments are all on Facebook. Now, mm -hmm. are, well, you're old. I am old. I'm very old. <laughs> I'm very old. We know that. This is a true fact. <laughs> you can't dispute it. But yeah, you know, to that point, but then the kids will put something on there, and they'll get 80 on Facebook, and they'll get 800 on Instagram. But they don't have, as, but I've noticed even on theirs, they don't get as many comments. It doesn't seem like there's as many comments on, to me on Instagram as there are on Facebook. I agree with that. Even when I reverse that. So it seems to me like Facebook is more engaging in regards to comment, mm -hmm. which seems to be meaningful to me in some manner. Yeah. Anybody doing TikTok yet? I, I dabble on it. I don't know what you're going to say. So I, and I, 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 think I, I that apologize it, for raising this question, but it, to me, if we're talking about engagement, it seems like it's important. I, th I find that Instagram's more for scrolling because that's more of our age group. It's more like- Scroll, like, click, move. Move on, move on, move on. Facebook is more engaging because that age group would much rather be like, that's awesome, love that you're doing that. Like they're more the cheerleaders. Mm. So that um, helps you build stronger relationships though. Also. Love it, yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's why they're both great. They're just very different. Um, I get much more comments on Facebook than I do on Instagram. Okay. So that theory is right, because I keep looking at this thing, it appeared that way, but I can never figure out why. Yeah, I mean, so. I get we get a lot of views on our reels on Instagram, more, and I screen record it, send it over to Facebook, because you can't obviously save it. Um, we get more on Instagram, probably because that's where it came from, and you know we're sharing it to Facebook, but that I, that's the only thing I think we get more of is when we do a reel. Well, because we get, it's real on Instagram, yeah. they're pushing reels right now, so yeah. that's, yeah. So yeah. you're, I hear you saying, Branding, number one. I want name recognition more than anything else. I don't even care if they look at the content. But if I'm going to do it, the content's going to be authentic. It's going to be real. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to go to my Instagram and find anything that's powerful. I mean, you're going to find just fun <laughs> stuff, what we're doing, you know? <laughs> yeah, She's consistent on yeah. all yeah. Consistency is powerful. Consistent. It's absolutely. Water. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Chris, what are y'all doing? Mostly Facebook and Instagram. Um, those are my top two. I don't, I have never dabbled in TikTok. I haven't really don't ever get on LinkedIn. You should. Um, LinkedIn yeah. would be really powerful for you. I think for me it's just the time factor. Maybe I, need, I just don't have a good enough schedule where I'm like, hey, spend X amount of time on this and then like content calendar might be helpful for me or something. I just got to get more strategic about where do I spend my time and what and also how much to post. And my question to some of you guys, do you guys have somebody that runs your social or is it yourself or is it like hey i hire someone to do videos and post for me but i also you know manage it myself because that for me i'm like i'm kind of a control freak in that regard but i also know i need help with content and like i would love just to have him follow me around one day and do a bunch of stuff and then either send me the videos or whatever that way i can just have something to post every day i have to get more consistent and but we do get decent engagement and shares and all that kind of stuff so but this is really important. There's no one right way, right? There's no I can't imagine Heidi ever outsourcing her social media. Yeah. But I have people that are crazy productive people. Adam Briley does nothing with social media, but he outsources and makes sure either out team, team members or people on the outside do it for him. Yeah. So I want you to remember that. Just because one person's doing it one way and they're yeah. successful, but doesn't mean that's the only way to do it. What make yeah. a suggestion too? Yeah. Yeah. I was just gonna say, like for me personally, I have like a system that I follow, so it's in the background running. There's always posts that I've scheduled at the beginning of the month okay. that are like just solid, like a slideshow, a carousel they call it, or whatever. Like mm -hmm. that's already planned. And then I know my job is to make sure five to seven times a week I'm getting on there with my face because that's what I heard. Like nobody wants to see a house; they actually want to see you. And so I have like sort of the meat and potatoes is already scheduled. I take two days early in the month, 
put that content together, schedule it so that that's gonna roll out every day. But then I know my personal responsibility throughout the week is to be in front of the camera and try. That's where I have to get better. Mm -hmm. Cause like a day will go by and I'm like, shoot, I didn't get on to make a reel or I didn't, you know, the video stuff is what I know my personal responsibility is because the rest is already scheduled and we can talk about it. I, I will say probably, if, you know, one of the things, the best thing you can do is invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're investing in your business, to me, um, I don't know of a better investment if you're playing the long game here that you could do than investing in a videographer. Yeah. Um, I want. I would love to hear from you guys that have invested in that, the difference it's made to give the confidence to those out there that are like, they kind of know they should, but they're just afraid to make that leap. You want to speak that high? Or, or yeah, Molly, Molly, Because go ahead, I did a little study on this. I hired a videographer and I, I paid quite a bit of money. I did a whole, and I committed to it for a year. And then I looked at the stats of what my professional video versus like my exactly. sort of one-off got me. Mm -hmm. And what I decided, what I discovered and decided for me personally, now it's different for everybody, right? Everybody's markets mm -hmm. look different, but I did not get the reach I thought I would get on the high price videos I paid for. They didn't go as far as I thought they would, but they pushed my, my like one-off videos harder. Mm -hmm. So this established me as a professional, but this is what kept people engaged. So it's a blend. Like I've learned mm -hmm. I need to not spend as much as I did on my videographer, but it can't go away. It has to stay. I have to keep that factor. Like I just shared with you guys, I just hired a new guy yesterday or the day before I came on the strip. Um, because they, one without the other just didn't work for me. What are you guys spending when, when you're hiring? Um, I think that was, I was like 1200 bucks for the day and I would get like seven videos, <coughs> four reels, something like that. It was fine. The content wasn't as good as I wanted it to be, but I realized again, that's what established me as a professional, but what made people like me were the videos I was personally making. Mm -hmm. Gotta have fun. We're authentic. It doesn't have to be an all in. You don't have to hire a full time big offer like what you're talking about. You can do those things. Um, interns, um, the person, the young person that does video for his local high school even, you know, that does that. The person, you know, churches have videographers now. Any of these folks that are doing this part time, it, it, it's, a, it's a great way to leg in on those things um, and just kind of see that. The other point, and, and Andrea, I want to come to you because it doesn't matter if you have great content if you don't know how to distribute it. That's what, and so you want to speak to that a little deeper because I think that's the most critical part. I think, for a rethinking this concept of videographers, everyone should have one. Everyone should have one full time on staff. Any other, um, anything else is an excuse. You can get them for thirty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars. It's just nothing. It's just absolutely nothing. These people are underpaid. Completely, it's almost like YouTube ads. It's a complete oh, undervalue. Mm -hmm. I can pay this guy three thousand dollars a month, and it's going to hold me accountable to do the videos. Yep. So if you're going to do two social and a half media, days for Molly, you're spending twelve hundred dollars a day. Two and a half days, but you got the whole team. You guys want to grow teams. Well, what right. a component of value I can offer that I can bring to the relationship right. and say, when you're with me, this videographer doesn't work for me. It works for all of us. Yes. So that's a no excuse not to have one. I'll die on this hill all day. I might get another one. <laughs> you want to know why? Because we're putting out so much content, you need to edit it. And I got 27 ages, so I'm trying to get 50. I want to get three Noahs. Because this is the best investment you can have. But before you get to that point, you have to personally decide to say, am I going to just foot around with this or am I going to go for it? Because if you're not going to go for it, just find something else to do. Just, just do direct mail. And you can do your stories, and it'll be okay, and you'll get a little bit of business, and you make a little bit of money. But if you really want this, if you want to blow this thing up, if you want to be an icon, you're going to do this. And there's no, just figure out which side of the road you're on. What decision do you need to make? If, and this and this is different for everybody. I'm just speaking for me, like, because I get fired up about this. It is okay to sell 50 houses a year. You don't have passion, that's okay, we don't care. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you know, look, just be honest with yourself. Do you want to sell 50 homes a year? Awesome, great life, great living, whatever. Do you want to sell 100? 150. Now, if you're starting to get over 100 and you're going to try to provide opportunities for other people on your team, you're going to need a lot of leads. This is how you do it. This isn't like new school, oh, this is so progressive. This is tried and true. So let's not stop thinking like, oh my God, this is amazing. We're doing social media. Everyone's, this is the new thing. Mm -hmm. And it's not even new. It, this is tried and true. It's like what Craigslist was 12 years ago or what the paper was. So we're not doing anything that everyone, uh, agent is not already doing. The question is, can you do it more? Can you do it better? Are you tough enough mentally?
to deal with the mental warfare of this business and create the content at the same time. Yeah. And if you're not, just accept it and say, this is where I need to be. I don't need the full-time video. But if you want it, just hire it. Because it's not a lot of money. Two deals, three deals. Yeah. Duncan, you're the only Gen Z, I think, on this group, right? Yeah. Right. Anyone else Gen Z? So, and you're new, you're very new to the business. Right. How, how are you connecting, right? Because you're probably coming from social media from a different platform or a different perspective than others. So. And, and most 23 year olds are not buying houses. So you've got to be no. mindful of, okay, I can't just attract 23 year olds because the average first time home buyer last time I saw was 31. I don't know what your market is, but probably not far off from that number. Right. So I use Instagram, I use Facebook, like all, all, all of us are. The biggest thing that's making a difference for me is LinkedIn. And it's, I don't know if it's because of the business background that I have or the social media marketing background that I had before I got into, the, into real estate when I was in college or what it is. But what I've been doing is I've been doing a lot more land deals and a lot more commercial transactions. Somehow found my way into that this year. I'm connecting with these developers. I'm connecting with these builders on LinkedIn and I'm just sending them, hey, I saw you guys just bought so-and-so land out in Yulee or over in Middlebird or wherever it is in the Northeast Florida area. Are you guys looking for more, more land to build on? Are you guys looking for more opportunities to convert you know, this office space into a church or into whatever it is? And a lot of times, I don't post a lot on LinkedIn directly. A lot of my stuff is just messaging those people with the companies that I know they're either the decision maker or they're close to the decision maker they're they can in there. I've gotten about 60% response rate. So, so and this, is, this is great right yeah, here, right? Especially in low inventory. You want to talk about land, that's what everyone wants to talk exactly. about. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, our, inven or our land inventory <coughs> right now is as low as it's ever been. And we still have, I think Jacksonville was number three overall in the nation for overall growth and development for the city itself. And Northeast Florida, even more so but no one's tapping into that market. Everyone who's a commercial realtor or a commercial broker or things like that, they just want them to, want these people to associate their names with it and come to them directly. If you're putting those deals in front of them and you're saying, this is the cap rate, this is what it is that you can build here, this is what zoning says, this North is what you can do. I do now. I only recently learned, <laughs> I recently learned. If you're putting these things in front of them where you can break it down, okay, this is how much it's gonna take to get what you need, this is how much development is going to cost, this is how much these things are going to going to take, then they're you're already like you said, you're already doing the grunt work for them. And a lot of times, I mean, I've had people come in to come to me back from the message and say, hey, we are interested, but not right now. Okay, cool. I see what areas they're looking at and I send them stuff just randomly through the message, send them LinkedIn or send them a LinkedIn message from the MLS listing saying, hey, this is about to come on the market over in that area or I know you're doing something in Nassau County. If you guys want to break into St. John's County, there's this land. It's the same zoning as up there. If you want to do something, so are you giving somewhere. them off-market stuff? Because that's what people really want. That's um, right. If you're talking, it's so sexy right now. I yeah. just told someone today. I'm like, you want to do something with me? Go find me a bunch of industrial ground. Yeah. And bring it back to me. Hey, I got you. Seriously. That's now serious. we're talking, yeah. guys. Read these yeah. deals right now. <laughs> 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 you got to get out of your comfort zone, right? Because you're not right. just waiting for MLS to bring you a deal. Because Right. You're not going to go find me 60 acres of industrial ground probably list on MLS because then right. I have 20 other people I'm competing against. Absolutely. If you're coming, if I want, I don't want you to bring me a deal that I'm competing with five other people on, right? <laughs> right. Bring that me a deal. Yeah. Let's go to the farmer. Let's get the deal. Out. Exactly. So, so that's off the social media, but I do want to follow up on that late later on. How are you doing those things? Because this is a huge avenue to build wealth mm -hmm. and hopefully maybe even start getting cut into deals outside of just earning commissions. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's someone in our office that she literally she had something closing in the in the land realm and commercial realm she said all right whatever my commission is that i make put it into the company and i'm a part-time owner or a, i'm a part owner and That's she's making that today. passive income off of it right off of that so there's opportunities every day to get into the big money deals the yeah. land deals the stuff that no one else is getting into because i mean first time home buyer market over here is insanely saturated as is the luxury market and it's good to have those coming in but you need to differentiate yourself and be smart. See, so nobody, I, I wouldn't have, I, I guess I don't want to say nobody. Who would have guessed 23 year old LinkedIn, <laughs> no, LinkedIn was the social media vehicle he's most focused on that's helping him grow the most. I dig it. Right? I'll bet you if you had 100 people in the room, not two people would raise their hand and say, oh, a 23 year old using LinkedIn to grow their business faster than anything else. You got to think differently. Yeah. 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 I can't wait to follow Duncan Foster and watch what you put out. 
And I'm going to challenge you, you should make more content around He's that. Starting He's, He's starting to. He's starting to. Hey, every, every day, you should just own that stuff yeah. in Jacksonville. You can be the guy. Yeah. And you're smart, you got the look, you, you know what you're talking about. No, seriously, like every day. Industrial land. Every day. That's Industrial. the future. Okay. Absolutely. Um, Vince wants to use you for himself. <laughs> Lynn, <laughs> period. I want Dude, if you'll sign a contract, I'll work with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about everyone participating. Gee, we've not heard from you. Talk to me. Um, so something I haven't heard actually, as I use mainly Instagram and I get a lot of engagement through there, but on Facebook, um, so I live in a subdivision and every subdivision has a Facebook group. Okay, so That's I get exactly. onto the Facebook group of the subdivision and I try to provide as much value as I can. For, I'll go into the tax records and I'll find out how many homes there are. You know, how many, and uh, HomeSnap does a good job of telling you, um, you know, how long this person has stayed there. They have these filters you can put in that says likely to list, <coughs> most likely to list, based on the number of years that they have lived in the house. It even tells you what their mortgage, um, what the interest rate is. If you collect all that data, you can actually see who is most motivated to sell. And then, you know, at the, um, we have, in our subdivision, we have a clubhouse, we have a pool. So um, I haven't done this yet, but you know, just life happened. I recently got engaged and whatnot. So um, I'm gonna like order some food trucks or something. You know, our pool is gonna open here in the next week, and I'm gonna get like an ice cream truck and just invite everybody and just have a little tent. I'm not gonna push myself, but you know, I'm there if you need me. Um, I own two or three rental properties. Again, they're both in subdivisions as well, and I'm gonna send out some mailers through there just so they know who I am. Um, our firm actually, every time we have a listing. Uh, they send out uh, within a mile radius. Uh, they send out postcards. You know, it's a little bit different now because you know, as it's instant, it goes under contract. We used to say for sale, active, but now we do just listed or just sold. Uh, <coughs> a number above, you know, um, list price that you do, and I've gotten a little bit of engagement through there as well. But when you live in that neighborhood, you should own that subdivision. There's no reason not to. You will have other realtors who are. You know, we live in that subdivision, but who cares? You're doing something up there now. Next door, yeah. Uh, I tried next door. I everyone's just so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, 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 the way, the the way you run the capital process and know what they're saying, they're not because I see a yeah. lot of deals. Minor positive. Yeah, I see a lot of deals where people are like, you know, oh, they're gonna listen to me. Don't worry. I'm like, no, you get it. You get it coming soon. You get listening because our next door app, someone pops on there, and the next thing you know, someone else is buying that house, and you're like, oh. Shit. I should have yeah, had that so, so, so I, I would like to see you at least be on there to pay attention, if you, even if you're not using it for any other reason. Next door is fun for if a house sells that didn't hit the market, neighbors don't know anything yes, about it. Yes. That's just a cool thing to be like, hey, I was just on the MLS today or tax records or whatever you want to say, because that a lot of people about realtors actually posting on there. Right. But then you're just adding value and right. being the you pro be in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, but if you're like, hey, this one just closed, never even hit the market, closed for this much square footage, whatever. Let me know if that. you have questions. Yeah. You just shut up. Sorry, G, didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I, uh, for six months I advertised with Nextdoor. I just uh, didn't get much engagement and I heard more people. Yeah. Well, you can advertise, you can pay them. I you can pay them. Yeah, that's where that's a no brainer. But you, it's um, an interesting, yeah. like, read up on the scale of that. Like, it's not a normal ad scale. It's different. Yeah. The thing is, if you can spend 200 bucks on YouTube and get 33,000, like, I don't understand why everyone's just not on YouTube all the time. Yeah. Kyle, let, um, I haven't heard from you. What are y'all doing social media wise? What are you, what, what are you focusing on? Yeah, so uh, I would say my social media in general is probably a lot like Sierra's, um, where it's uh, you know just kind of the activity posts. Uh, but the biggest component uh, to my social media is is Facebook groups, exactly like she is. Um, we're not really subdivision specific in, in my market, but it's it's a lot of communities. Um, Northeast Ohio is very community driven, um, whether it be around a school district or around just like a hypothetical area. Like um, there's an area right by me called Porridge Lakes. It's a busy southern lakes in Ohio. Um, there's uh, like seven or eight bars that you can boat up to, you know, right on the lake. It's, it's a lot of fun. And so, um, they drink in Ohio? Oh, yeah. That's all we have to do is drink in Ohio. <laughs> so, uh, just similar to Nebraska. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of what I do is just a lot of involvement on those community pages. And so, um, you know, I think it is important to not oversaturate what you post on those, you know. So, I'm really posting, you know, like a, a newly listed um, in that community group. Um, I'm not really putting solds and stuff like that. I feel like 
at some point you start ticking people off and you start right. seeing too much of it. But um, generally speaking, if you live in a neighborhood, you, you want other people or you know of other people that are looking in that area. So um, I end up double ending a lot of deals that way um, of just posting the just listed and I get a lot of people that will um, you know tag friends of theirs that are looking and then suddenly I have kind of a farm list of, of that area just from people that are tagged in my posts of people mm -hmm. wanting them to move in. So. Um, so I get a lot of that stuff. And then, uh, to be honest, like on, on some of the more fun areas, like the, the Porch Lakes area, um, I do a lot of bar books. <coughs> like, so I'll sponsor, you know, so instead of just yes. being that guy that yes. posts just, you know, like stuff that clearly is business related, I'll go, I'll organize a bar crawl around Porch Lakes. And I'll just say, hey, you know, let's, you know, I get all, it's all seven bars on board. They, you know, give me tickets and they obviously like the exposure too. You know, they usually have some sort of like shot glass or something for them when we get there. and. Uh, and, and that it, I try to make it look like I'm not on those community pages just to simply push my brand. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a lot of success with those. Do you and, film it when you do the bar crawls? Any, um, yeah, like not professionally. Yeah, I mean, that's something that just from this conversation, I think I'm definitely going to do is the, is the professional videography of, of that. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, it's really just, I, I try to just brand myself as a community expert. I was mm -hmm. a high school track coach for 10 years, and so I have a, lot, a large sphere from that. Um, and just really just making sure that it looks like I'm kind of giving, uh, it's known that I'm giving back as well as just posting out there. And, and I think that's really worked for me. That's what I do. Let me ask you a question. When they're doing fun events, is it better to have a professional there or is it better just to have someone there just both. kind of I'd of the both. moment, huh? Both. Both. Both? both. both. I, like, I like the idea of the hashtags. When you can get a bunch yeah. of people to say, hey guys, if you didn't mind, hashtag right. Oberlin Real Estate. And that's State another thing that I think that, you know, and I probably won't even make it that specific, you know, maybe right. just some event that can eventually tie back to a page or something. Yeah. Um, I have two things to add. One, when I have a buyer and like um, I'm in that subdivision page, I will, I won't say just sold or anything. I'll just be like, welcome your new neighbor. It's obviously branded to me, but I'm just giving a face to the name. Super smart. So, um, yeah. also, we do at the beginning of the school year, we have a Facebook group, um, Adopt a Teacher. We have all the teachers do an Amazon wish list. They post it in there. We just moderate it. So, like, you know, thank you for posting your link. Or, like, and then people get on there. They Obviously, they know me in my community as a real estate agent. So, I don't need to be in the group, like, promoting me as real estate. I just need to be in the group showing my face, quote unquote, on social media. So that's a huge one that helps us in like August. Yeah, Schools I did that and it's been great. No, yeah, it literally says account. adopt a teacher in Lincoln County. So yeah. like start the group, yeah. add oh, all the teachers. The yes, mm -hmm. yeah. add all the teachers and then community members. The teachers will post their Amazon wish lists and then the community will buy their stuff for them. It's great. And it's mailed directly right. to the teacher. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. You yeah. pay too, right? Yeah, it's huh? been great. You pay change too, like Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, I mean, yeah. I so, like, <laughs> if some of my clients post their <laughs> wish list, obviously, I'm like, got it. You know, yeah, I you bought it. Right. So and it's just a, it's just a way to keep your name top of mind. That's really good. All right, so we, to wrap this one up, you, you want to add something? Then we're gonna. Well, oh, nobody oh, answered oh. Curtis's question about outsourcing social media, so mm -hmm. I just want to go back to that. Yeah, please. I got 20 questions I never even got to here. Yeah. But, yeah, well, the best advice I ever got, Vince gave it to me like four years ago, and he was like, "Know your price per hour." And once I realized what my Everyone price per hour that, was, right? it changed. Yeah. Yeah. Your, let, let him explain it because this yeah, is go. powerful. Go. This is. This is business 101. Is I always tell people, people always look at cost, cost, cost. It's 200, it's 2,000, it's 1,200. It's, cost is only one of the aspects of running a business. What's the value of your time? Mm -hmm. I'm giving you the simple rule, and if you give me your numbers, your hour, when you work a, a week, I'll give you your real number. Um, but for every $100,000 you make a year, your time is worth $50 an hour. So if you make $200,000 a year, your time is worth $100 an hour. How do you get that? 50 weeks a year, 40 hours a week, 2,000 hours in a year, right? So just figure out how many how many hours you work a year and divide it by the income, it's gonna come up that, right? 200,000 divided by 2,000 hours is $100 an hour. So, <coughs> people always want to look, here's how much money it costs me, and I'm like, stop. If your time is worth $100 an hour, or $200 an hour, or $500 an hour, that's the reason I said, the very first thing you do is you get an assistant, okay? when you start building a team. Because here's what I know. I know as a person that's a rainmaker doing 40, 50, 60 deals a year, they're spending 20 hours a week doing non-productive, non-revenue generating, non-business growth activities. Yep. That is $20 an hour work. Why the heck are you worth $100 an hour yep. or $200 an hour? Are you doing $20 an hour work, right? Yep. So understand the value of your time. 
make sure that you're spending your time doing what will yield you the greatest result, the highest and best use. To this point, 30, go hire somebody else to do the stuff that needs to be done to give great customer service, to do follow-up, to do all these other aspects to have a great business, but that's not what you should be doing. That doesn't even make good sense. Someone, I cannot understand why anybody that's worth $100 or $200 an hour is doing $20 an hour work. And they're not doing it an hour or two a week. They're usually doing it 10, 15, 20 hours a week. You're, you're not only screwing your business, but you're, you're taking your, your personal life. There's no work-life balance. You're, you're capping yourself. Megan Owens was stuck at 70, 80 deals per year until she finally went and hired somebody, a full-time assistant. Now she hammers out $140,000, $150,000 a year, making a million dollars a year in Omaha, Nebraska. And it, it was that one simple thing. She understood. I had to stop. She didn't understand until I forced her to do it, but <laughs> she understands now. You had, she had to stop doing all this non-productive, non-revenue generating activities because there's only so many hours in the day. She couldn't go beyond what she was doing. Yeah, and to me, I love social media. So yeah. to me, that's my downtime. That's my, you know, go play around yeah. with golf. So I love it. If you don't love it, then sub it out because you need to know your price per hour. This is a great point. I'm going to come around the room as I'm, as I'm making this last point. I want you to be thinking about this. If you had to tell everybody in this room one suggestion that is working for you that you would suggest they do with social media, that's what we want to end on this, this session with. I'll give you a perfect example of what Vince is saying. Noah's here videoing for us. He's been video, video, videoing for us. He started his business because he was out of Omaha. He heard this story before. Um, he's been in the business six months. He's got um, over $10 million pending and closed as a 21-year-old. He is one of the best videographers you will see, but guess what happens when he takes a listing? He hires someone else to do his videos. Because he already understands that his time, even though he loves it, and there's a certain portion of he wants to do, he understands the value of his time is to be on the phone with those sellers and those buyers. You just gotta get to a point where you get to a comfortable, even if you love it, you have to have some help that you can stay focused on those things. Doug, let's start with you. We'll just kind of go around. One thing you would say, if somebody's listening to this or somebody in the room, that you would suggest that you're doing that is 30 seconds. That. 30 seconds. Be serious and be intentional about posting and being on LinkedIn and being on as many of the platforms as you can because if you don't have the consistency across platforms and it'll work in cohesion, you might as well not be doing it. Awesome. Mm. Off-market is the sexiest thing that's happening right now. If you're not promoting off-market and your ability to get it, then you're losing money. Great. Molly. Make video consistently. Right, G. Be an expert in your neighborhood, especially. I'd say hire a videographer not just to shoot the video, but to study the platforms and how they're changing all the time so you can be ahead of the curve. Curves. I think engagement's huge. Engage with both. You know, people will comment, comment back, and find your other followers and just engage. Um, I think be the community expert, not just real estate expert, but community. Go to the new uh -huh. coffee shops post about them, all that stuff. I'd say be consistent with whatever you are doing and just and stick with it and, and let it play out. Guys, if we left right now, you got something. Mm -hmm. This has been great. Appreciate all the transparency. And we got more to get to. There's going to be more of this coming, though, in the next, next day and a half. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful, and I'll talk to you soon.